more important things. Tony. Hello. Hey. Yeah, I did get a haircut. How oh, interesting you'd mention. You what? Oh, that's cool. What'd you buy with your... Uh... Why would you do that? We will teach him. We will teach him. That's right. I got an Atari Jaguar. And John is so furious that he's actually refused to do this review with us. Yeah. And that's why we found this guy. You might remember him from... That's some good work, Farmer Waythorn. So, we're gonna talk about the system a little bit, and the few games that I have for it. Most Atari Jaguar games are crap, but I actually have some decent ones, so we're gonna look at them. Now, when everyone talks about the Jaguar... Nobody he's... talks about the Jaguar, Tony! We've what? been over this. When people actually do talk about the Jaguar, they tend to say... What the hell is that? <laughs> they tend to say the same thing over and over again. Jaguar, Jaguar, Jaguar! Do the math! Maybe the world's first 64-bit system! Look, no mother dust cover, because just like a real Jaguar, this system's sensitive bits are exposed to the environment. On the back, guess what? It's a gaping mother back China! Oh yeah! And how are you gonna control this marvelous system? It's the cell phone you're embarrassed to own. 911, we've got a party emergency! Oh my! And guess what? The cartridges have handles! In case you've ever dropped your cartridge, now you won't! So, the Atari Jaguar. Again, a failed system. It was kind of in a weird place. It was competing with the 16-bit systems, but also for a brief period of time, the 32-bit systems. And really, the Atari Jaguar was claiming to be a 64-bit system. It featured two processors, and Atari, with its famous Do the Math campaign, claimed that it added up to 64 bits. The math community remained skeptical. Yeah, the Jaguar didn't really have the library to have any sort of huge fan base, and most of, most of the games kind of sucked. The games I have are halfway decent, so they're not really representative. But we're going to rate them based on graphics and playability. 0, 32x, 10, and 64. So, let's rock this. Let's go! Mm-hmm. Connection problem. This game actually has some really good music, but I don't know what modes play the music. Because I'm not hearing anything right now. Well, I was playing it a little earlier, and I had music for like five minutes, and then it disappeared, so... Oh, really? Let's get some damn music in this thing. Word. What the fuck? Where's the fucking music? That's one of the key points of the game. I just want to get the damn music going. It's, it's broken. It's never coming back. <laughs> it's left you, Tony. It's over. Tempest 2000. Numbers. I'm going to give it a zero for graphics, no disrespect to the vectors, but I do think the 32X could have pulled that stuff off. Gameplay, I'm going to give an eight. Very simple, but I think it's the type of arcade simple that's really addictive and will love you a long time. Mm. Yeah, you know, I think I'd maybe give it a 0.5, maybe a one for graphics. I think it's slightly beyond what the 32X could do. Um, Gameplay-wise, yeah, I'd give it like a 7. I can't imagine playing it for a couple hours, but I can imagine every 15 minutes playing it for like a minute and a half and running back to my basement to play it. Um, so yeah, about a 7. 
Uh, yeah, I would definitely say zero for graphics. Uh, the 32X could probably handle it, and beyond that, the graphics were really shoddy. I mean, for 1981, when the game was actually made, good graphics, uh, but it was just ported, and uh, they just stuck in some extra particles. Not really all that impressive. Uh, gameplay, though, I'm going to give a, uh, a 7. Um, it's kind of addicting, uh, just like those old arcade games, so um, it's something that you can put a lot of time into if you like that kind of stuff. So, super burnout. Rock on. Ready? Oh my goodness. Set, go! That was pretty good graphics. Yeah, actually, you know, I was just kind of getting my seizure on with the crowd. <laughs> You know, I, I like these graphics because it doesn't try to be 3D, mm -hmm. you know, it just stays with like sprite-based mm -hmm. graphics, and it they're really big sprites, it does it really well, and you get a really good sense of speed with this, actually. Although I feel that some of these turns should be altering the scenery a little bit more. This is pretty cool. I like this nighttime business. Cool the moon. Yeah, that looks cool, actually. Did that sign Crap, just say, do this. the map? It's a record! I'm gonna give it a 6 for playability because even though it is a pleasant play, I don't think there's an awful lot to the game and I think it will get old fast. Graphics, I'm gonna give a 4. It looks nice, the backgrounds are pretty, but it's not terribly dynamic and... It, but it's better than what the 32X can do. Yeah. I would give it a three and a half for graphics. I love the big, colorful sprites. Uh, really work for me. And I also love the sense of speed that you get from the game. Great sense of speed. So I'd give the playability six and a half. But again, I do think it would wear after a while. I'd say four for graphics. Um, lots of colors, lots of speed, uh, good detail. Um, a little bit of repetitive sprites. I would give it a three for playability, just because there's not a whole lot of depth. I mean, you try not to like skid out of control when you're turning, but that's about it. I could see that. If you're not like a big racing fan, it can kind of, you know. And even if you are a racing fan, it's not going to give you the depth that you expect. And yeah. there's only one player, so. And there's only one player. Good point. Um, all right, let's move on. Rayman. Oh, <gasps> my favorite. Yeah, this is really big sprites, again, kind of like Super Burnout, very, very colorful as well. Very colorful. I... There's a lot more detail and uh, thought put into this game more than the other two games we looked at. I haven't seen a 2D game this detailed in quite some time. Yeah. It's refreshing. I like it a lot, it's actually. really cool looking. Look at how happy Rayman is. <laughs> yeah, these are PlayStation quality 2D graphics. Yeah. Better than PlayStation, much crisper. Yeah. The Jaguar had more games, either like this or with the crispness of these graphics. I think it could have done pretty well, actually. I mean, this is a oh, beautiful yeah. game. This is a gorgeous game. No doubt about it. They have that cartoony expressiveness. There's color everywhere. I mean, look at this right here. Those little mushrooms, they're just dancing around. They're as good as any Mushroom Kingdom mushroom. Exactly, look at that flower. It's just rocking out right now. That flower is just having a ball right now. I mean, there's so many little whoa, whoa, details. Whoa, hold off for just a little second. Take a look at Rayman when you leave him alone. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> Rayman, numbers. Graphics, Easy 11. You saw how beautiful it was, and I played 2D games on the N64. They do not look that crisp. Gameplay-wise, I'm going to give it a 7. That's sort of an incomplete. It could go up, it could go down, since we didn't get to play that much of it. As far as I could tell, though, it seemed just like an average platformer. Yeah. Graphically, like you said, amazing sprites. It was beautiful. I'd give it an 11. Um, same thing for gameplay. Kind of seemed a little bit average, but it was a pleasant experience. It wasn't bad. Uh, graphics definitely top-notch graphics, definitely really smooth, really lush, definitely better than the 64. Uh, gameplay, I'm going to have to give more of a 4. Uh, Mario and Sonic are really iconic games, really iconic platforms. Characters and villains are both really good. And there's also really iconic parts of the gameplay, too. You know, Mario has his mushrooms and Sonic has his speed loops. Uh, Rayman doesn't actually have those things, you know? Um, 
it just kind of takes all this out and you're just left with a bare platform. But, uh, you know, it's what it is, and it's very beautiful, too. So, the Atari Jaguar. Is it worth getting for $60, $70 on eBay? Not unless you have a certain obsession. <clears throat> if you happen to have a Jaguar already, and you only have crappy games, are there some good games out there that are worth checking out for $10, $15 on eBay? Yeah, absolutely. It's your money. Jedi.